Do you know how many websites are being hacked each and every day worldwide? Any guess? How many would you say? Okay, let me show you. Okay, so let's find out. Google search. And there you go. As you can see, 30,000 websites are hacked daily. Now, if you are a hacker and watching this, I only have one thing to say to you. Stop it. Get some help. All right, and now that we have this out of the way, let me show you how to secure your website against hackers. But before that, let me give you a few quick reminders of things not to do. Okay, just to be clear here, these are a few things you should never do. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Never ever use the same password twice. That's right. Don't use the same password to access your emails, your Instagram account, your Facebook account and your website. Instead, have different passwords for each platform. Now, in conjunction with that, always, always use complex passwords. And just to confirm, no, your name followed by your phone number is not a complex password. These, on the other hand, are complex passwords. This is what complex passwords look like. They are very, very hard to crack and hack. Now, if you are worried about having to remember or store this password somewhere, you can always create a Gmail account and use Google Chrome as your main browser, and it will store all your passwords for you, even suggest complex passwords for each site and every site that you use. And now for all you web designers out there who are working on a tight budget, I know it is tempting, very tempting, but please, 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 I am begging you, stop using null script. They are free for a reason, because they contain additional piece of code in them that will allow any hacker to access your website within seconds. Buy the real theme, the real plugin from the developer's website. Next, always update WordPress to the latest version and do the same with all the plugins that are installed. And again, this is why you should always buy the genuine plugins and, and theme because it gives you access to all the updates as well. And finally, make sure that you have an SSL certificate installed on your server uh, because with an SSL certificate, basically the communication is encrypted, which means that uh, it makes it much harder for hackers to intercept bits of information. Now, let me show you how to tighten the security of your WordPress website. Again, so far, none of the websites on which I've used this method were compromised, so it works pretty well. All right, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, and for this, we're going to go to our WordPress dashboard and install a new plugin. So we can go into plugin, add new, and in the search box, look for all-in-one WP security. So we can install that on a fresh WordPress installation or an existing website. Both ways will work fine. So this is the one here. So just click install. There you go. And now we need to activate it. So click activate. And as you can see, our plugin is now installed and activated. So now we can go into WP security. As you can see by the side, there's an extra tab now. So click on this. And this is our main dashboard for this feature. Now, as you can see here, we have a security strength meter. So that's a very, very nice functionality they added actually that will allow you to see how strong your website is security wise. So we are at 15 now and we're going to try to reach 300. So we can go right up to 515, but with our tutorial here, I'm going to show you how to reach 300, which is a happy medium. And for this, we're going to configure a few of those sections here by the side. As you can see, we have quite a few and we're going to start with the first one here, user accounts. So basically, this is usually the first point of entry that a hacker will try. By default, a lot of people have admin as their login details. So this is the one thing you shouldn't have, obviously. You know, you should have a specific login name, a different account login name, like we have here. We Here we have Mr. Web Reviews. And the next step is to make sure that the name is not displayed publicly. So click on Display Name. And as you can see here, my Mr. Web Reviews admin account has the same login name and display name. So you need to edit that. So open this in a new tab. And as you can see here, this is my username, Mr. Web Reviews. But the nickname that's uh, displayed basically here, it's also Mr. Web Reviews. So this makes it very easy for hackers to find a point of entry again. So what you need to do here is to basically replace your nickname here with your name maybe just like this, you know, and the same here, display name publicly as and select your name again, just like that. Scroll down the page and don't forget to update your profile. So we can close this now. And if we refresh your page here, 
as you can see, there's no more action required. So this is perfect. Now, next we have our user login. So basically this section here is about brute force login attacks. So basically one way that hackers try to compromise site is via a brute force login attack. So basically they use repeated login attempts until they guess the password. So this can be avoided as well. Okay, so to enable this feature, take this box here. We want to leave this one unticked. And next is the maximum logging attempt. So you have to be very careful here with this feature because you could log uh, yourself out as well. So maybe you want to set this maybe to five. So what does that mean is that if someone tries to log in into your admin panel and fails five times in a row, their IP will be blocked completely. So they won't be able to log in again using that IP address. Now again, you have to be very careful not to lock yourself out of your own website. So maybe a safe, happy medium would be five. And then we have the time period. So basically you can try to log in up to five times and within which period of time. So here, for instance, you can set this up to up to five minutes. So that gives you about an attempt every minute, which is the, uh, a good average. And then we have the time length of the lockout. So if you lock someone out with the IP address, for how long do you want to, to be uh, banned and locked out of your website? So this is in minutes, so 60 minutes to correspond to one hour. So you can just leave everything the way it is at the moment. So the next option we're gonna take is this one here, display generic error message. So we want to do this as well and instantly lock out invalid usernames. So basically anyone that's not registered on your website is, uh, doesn't have a, a, an actual username registered on your website in your database will be locked out automatically. So we can take this one as well. And obviously you want to be notified by email if possible, especially in the beginning, just to make sure that the system is working. So you might want to take this one and make sure that your email address is correct. So we can save everything for this section. Now, if you are mainly accessing your website from let's say a desktop PC or a laptop and you connect it up to a router that has a static IP, you might want to whitelist your own IP address. So you can take this, type in your IP address, and this way you can never lock yourself out. And as always, don't forget to save your settings. And then we have the user registration. So basically here you can enable manual approval of new registration. So basically anyone who's gonna register on your website, you'll have to approve it manually. So this is very handy, especially uh, to avoid spam and bogus registration. You have to approve this manually. So take this. Now, if you have a WooCommerce a website, if you're running an e-commerce website and people have to register online, I would not enable it. But if you're not running an e-commerce website, I would highly recommend that you take this box and then click save as always. Then we have the registration captcha. So again, this is an added stumbling block for anyone trying to get into your website. So I would highly recommend you take this one as well. So what it's gonna do basically is to add a simple mathematical question. So for instance, one times three equals what? And you'd have to go to give the, the right answer, obviously, you know? So again, save this. Okay, next we're gonna secure our database. So it's a very important step here because there's a lot of methods that hackers use. It's called an SQL injection and they can automatically insert code into your database. And obviously, as you can see, we are using at the moment the default database prefix, which is WP underscore. So any hacker would know that. So we want to change this. Now, before we go to the next step, as you can see, we have a warning message here. It says that it is recommended that you perform a database backup before using this feature. And I would highly recommend you do so. So click on that link and run a backup first. Okay, and next we are going to change the database prefix. So on this step, you can do it either way. You can either take this and let the plugin generate a random six character string for you, or you can type in your own right there. So it could be anything. So you can type any random uh, code followed by underscore, as you can see here. Or again, you can just let the plugin decide for you. So click change database prefix after this. And as you can see, it's created one for us, WHMUQ underscore. And this will add an additional layer of security. Obviously, it's going to make it very much harder for hackers to break into your database and uh, use SQL injections. So next, we have the file system security. So basically, this feature will double check that your folders and files have the right permission settings uh, for accessibility and read and write privileges, basically, you know. So if you scroll down the page here, you can see that I have one file here 
uh, which uh, we should change the, the permissions. So basically all you have to do just to set that up perfectly, just click on this. And now if you go back, as you can see, now they're all in green, which is perfect. Next, we have a PHP file editing. So as you can see here, the WordPress dashboard by default allows administrators to edit PHP files, such as the files from your plugin and the theme as well. So this is often the first tool an attacker will use to be able to log in since it allows code execution. So this is very self-explanatory. Obviously, it's very dangerous as well. So you want to take this one definitely, you know, and click save. And we are going to do the same with the WP file access. I'm going to take this box as well and then click save. Now, next on our list is the blacklist manager. Now, I would not recommend you enable this one because as you can see, this feature can lock you out of admin if it doesn't work correctly on your website. And it did happen to me in the past. So we're going to just skip this for now. Next, we have the firewall. Okay, from this section, we're just going to enable two features. We're going to enable the basic firewall protection, which is very handy. And then down the page, we're going to block access to the debug.log file as well. So I'll click on this, save for now. Next, we're going to go to into additional firewall rules. So from here, we're going to disable the index view, which is just one step already. And then forbid proxy command posting, uh, enable this as well. So basically, uh, this setting is to deny any request that uses a proxy server when posting comment, and which is often the case when you have bots and spam. And then we're going to use this one as well. So XSS is a short for cross-site scripting. So basically it's a type of attack uh, with malicious script that are injected into your website and enable this one as well. Now we can save this again. And then next we're going to go into internet bots. We're going to enable this. So basically it's just to block any fake Google bots and even Yahoo and uh, Bing and all that. So save this. Next, we're going to prevent hot links as well. Enable that. So hot links basically is when someone displays an image from your website by using its web link directly. So you want to enable that and click save. Next, we have the brute force section. So this is my favorite one of all. I think this is the best feature of all. So basically from here, we can set up your own login URL, your admin access URL. So basically by default to access your backend, you have to type in your URL followed by WP admin. This is usually how you log in. And now you can customize that and create your own, which is going to increase obviously the level of difficulty to access your website. So first you'd want to enable the feature, click on this, and then you can type in which URL you want, which extension. So let's say, for instance, I want to type Mr. Underscore Web Underscore Reviews, in which case, instead of typing in my URL followed by WP hyphen admin, I would have to type Mr. Underscore Web Underscore Reviews to access the backend and log into my website. And when you're happy enough with the URL that you selected, click Save Settings. And as you can see here, we have a message as a reminder that tells us that our current login URL is this one. So you might want to copy and paste this or maybe bookmark it somewhere. Just don't forget it because this is the only way you're going to uh, be able to log into your website after you log it out, obviously, you know, so just make sure to save this somewhere properly. Next, we have the login capture. So instead of the mathematical question, two plus one equals and all that, you could enable the reCAPTCHA option here uh, from Google themselves. So you could go on the Google website, obviously, and uh, enable this and put your site key and secret key. So that's really up to you. Uh, it's not mandatory, obviously, but it's an added uh, security and added protection. Now, we also want to enable all these features underneath. It's not related just to reCAPTCHA, it's just CAPTCHA altogether. So you want to enable that on the login page, on the lost password page, and on the custom login page. So enable all those three, and then just click Save Settings. And then we have the Honeypot feature here as well. And this is such a lovely feature, and you definitely want to enable this. So how does it work? Well, very simple. A hidden field is placed somewhere inside the form, which only robots will submit. So basically, if that form is being submitted containing that code, obviously it will be dealt with consequently. So click save after this. Now let's take care of the spam prevention. So from here, you want to enable this one and this one and then click save. And then we're going to go into common spam IP monitoring as well. And you're going to enable two features. We're going to enable this one here. I'm going to set that to three. So what does that mean? Basically, your plugin will automatically block 
permanently block any IP address which has exceeded a certain amount of comments, which is basically three comments on your website that are marked as spam, which just happen from time to time when it's bots, you know. So click on save. And as you can see, we have uh, two additional tabs here, BuddyPress and BBPress. So I'm, I don't have these installed on uh, WordPress at the moment, but if you have these installed on your WordPress installation, you might want to enable them as well to basically add CAPTCHA to, uh, to their registration forms. Okay, next we have our scanner, which is another very useful tool. And this is in relation to file change detection. So basically when a website has been compromised, uh, your hacker might have changed files on your system and you want to be made aware of this immediately. So basically you can scan your files and detect any changes made. So again, I would highly recommend that you enable this feature here and then you can set the scan time interval. So maybe you can have it done once a week, maybe every seven days, or maybe you want it every day. This is really up to you, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then you want to receive a message if a file is detected, a file change is detected. So take this one and make sure that your web address here is correct and then click save settings. Okay, and next we're gonna go into miscellaneous. And from here, we're gonna enable two features only. We're going to frames, we're gonna enable this, so basically the iframe protection, which will basically prevent other sites from displaying any of your content via iframe. And then another useful feature is the user enumeration. So you want to enable this as well. So this is basically to prevent external users or bots from fetching the user's info, such as author one, etc., etc. So this is very, very useful as well. So click save settings. Okay, now let's go back to our dashboard. And as you can see, we achieved a score of 315 in strength. And this, guys, is guaranteed to have your website safe and secure and very tight against hackers. Okay, guys, so that's basically how you can protect your website against hackers. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. It would greatly help with growing this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.